Welcome to Heart of the Home, away from home. I'm back at Charlene's house and I brought my good buddy, Hans Rupert, with me. And Hans, honey, you're here because you created this wonderful product called Honey Buzz. Thank you. And I love sweet potatoes, but I don't like to peel them. <laughs> you put me to Did work. Did you notice you got the job? I know, yeah, job? I got that Did job right off the bat. Did you notice you got that? But I told you, I grew up in the South with Southern cooks who said, sweet potatoes have to have brown sugar, cinnamon, lots of butter. Sometimes marshmallows too. Absolutely. <laughs> I do marshmallows and honey in yep. it, but you taught me that the natural sweetness of the potato with the honey buzz is wonderful. Now what are we going to do with these? Well, honey buzz I think is uh, it's kind of all purpose and uh, it's kind of like a, like a dry barbecue sauce really mm -hmm. and it's got the honey and orange peel and coriander and uh, some smoked peppers in there, so it's got a little bit of a heat to it. So we're going to do it on the sweet potatoes, but I think you're going to put it on some uh, some pork as I'm well. I'm going to try this. Now, I haven't done it with pork yet, but you told me it would be good. And let yep. me tell you, when you're doing that, I, you're going to be slicing the sweet potatoes. We're going to do them in circles. Okay. I'm going to take flour, and I just have my white lily flour. I'm going to put, Hans, what you think? Is that enough? Yeah, that's good. You mix, think that's mix good? It all. Yeah, that'd okay. Be good. We can and Hans, what is a recipe? Only a beginning. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think it's, that's a great way to put it. It's just a jumping on point. It and, is. Uh, you you do what you like. I'll do yep. what I like, and we'll see if it works. Yep. Now, the one thing that works for both of us, we both live near the Blue Star Grocery that's Store. That's right. And they happen to have this pork tenderloin on sale for $1.98 a pound. So we've got about 25 people here we have to feed. Wow. And I think this is going to be a budget meal. We're going to do the sweet potatoes and the pork, and our friend Annie from Annie's Restaurant is going to make biscuits for us. Well, I'm going to pay attention to that because uh, I don't know if you remember when I was on the Food Network and I had to make biscuits for you Paula Deen. You did not do well. I did not do well you at all. You did not That's do well. Now, Scotty Mayfield will put my biscuits up against anybody's, but I will put Annie's up against everybody's. Wow. Hers yeah. are the best. I live a less than a mile from there, and uh, I do. often stop there in the, in the mornings for, for a biscuit. So. Well, not only is she a great cook, she's a great lady. She's a great lady. And I said, you know, we live in a community full of great people, and during your cancer battle, you found that this community rallied around you, didn't they? Oh, absolutely, and uh, I've, I've said it many times, I can't imagine being sick if I lived in a, in a big city we were just sort of anonymous, you know, right. and so uh, I got cards from, from people that, I, I, well, I say I didn't know, but I, I hadn't seen them in 20 years, maybe, right. you know, or, or uh, grade school teachers, you know, mm -hmm. people that uh, I didn't know still were even aware that I was, was in town, you know. So, uh, no, it was, was made me feel really good on some really dark days to get those cards and letters and uh, an easy thing to do that I think people forget to do sometimes. Right, and, and you know, one of the things with you, um, your family history, our family had no history of cancer, and my husband lost his battle 11 months and three weeks into it. Right. And it was, we were kind of like, couldn't believe it, you yeah. know, because nobody, they all lived to be old, they didn't have any kind of problems, unlike your family, which had a history. A lot of, yeah, a lot of cancer in my family. So from the history, are you teaching people to, to be aware, to look for yeah. maybe telltale signs that you yeah, might and see? You know, the, uh, I think the, the biggest lesson there is just to listen to your body, and if you, if you know there's something wrong, um, to just, you know, Check it out. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've talked, uh, you and I personally have talked a lot about uh, early detection and on, right. on so many cancers, that's, uh, that's the way you do it. Now, you can't just go in there and ask a doctor, hey, do I have cancer? I mean, you have to have some sort of a, an idea, but um, if there's a strong family history, like for example, now my kids are gonna have to get checked when they're about 23, 24. Mm -hmm. um, they say basically if, if, your, if your parent had cancer to have your children tested about 10 years earlier than their diagnosis. So uh -huh. I was diagnosed at 32, or actually the day before my 33rd birthday. Um, and so they need to be diagnosed or, or checked when they're about, so you know, in, in their 20s. So. Uh huh. And um, with you, your children now, you have a boy and a girl. That's right. And they're both healthy. Yeah. But your sister lost a battle with cancer. That's right. She uh, she fought it. Had uh, had started with breast cancer and then it metastasized uh, liver and, and uh, possibly bone as well. You uh -huh. know, it's just. Uh, it was talk a about a fighter. Yeah, absolutely. She was a she was a. They took her kicking and screaming. It was a. She's a, a tough one, you mm -hmm. know. She was mm -hmm. an absolute tough one, and uh, and I, you know, I guess I was naive enough to think that that it, since it got her, it wouldn't get me, you know. And I mean, mm -hmm. you, I don't know. You just, I guess, people are naive about cancer kind of things, and even though it was a completely different type of cancer, obviously, uh, there was something there to, you know, right. that, that I ended up with it. And, lost half my stomach and uh, people always say they never trust a skinny chef thing. And so I'm going to give you half mine because Lord knows I've I'll got take plenty. It. You know? I'll take it. I, I said it's so hard and I know working in the food industry, my family has genetics. We're all heavy. All of them. And mm. everybody who isn't heavy in my family has had a bypass. Mm. 
I mean, when you go to family reunions, you can look down the table and you can say they've had surgery, they've had surgery, they've had surgery. Mm. Well, I eat good, I eat broccoli, I swim every day, I do all the good things I'm supposed to do and I can't lose weight. But I feel good and I feel healthy, mm. so I try to watch what I'm doing. And um, it's tough, it's tough. I'd like to weigh 139, you know, but I don't. Well, I was 215 prior to my whole cancer thing, and I'm about 150-ish now. Mm -hmm. uh, from mm -hmm. some, if I sneeze, I'm 149. If I have a little right. bite of the Sherry Martin Blizzard, I'm 151. <laughs> That's uh, right. That's but, right. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I wrestle with that now too. And, and uh, you know, it's, I think you're right. As long as you feel good and your mm -hmm. energy's up, whatever, mm -hmm. who cares what size, whatever you wear. Right. You know? So it's uh, and that's the thing. I mean, you are what you are. And, and like our family, I could be mad because our whole family's overweight. No. Yep. But they're all great cooks. None of them are lazy. You know, it's not from sitting on right. the couch. And I said, you know, Mama had bypass surgery. Mother was the ninth person in the country to have Oh, well, I didn't know that. And um, it was very experimental, mm. you know. And when she had it, she had some complications and some things happened. My daughter had it, and she lost almost 200 pounds. Wow. So um, all our family that wanted to do it did it, and they kept saying, why don't you do it? I'm happy with me the way that's I right. am. And I said, you know, I, I have a friend who had bypass surgery, and today she's my age. She looks 40 years older than me. Some people, you know, yeah. don't come it, out it, so it's well. It's tough on so your it's, body, it's too. it's your personal decision. Yeah. It is a tough, it's a tough decision. I, mean, I actually, you know, I had the essential, the equivalent of gastric bypass. I lost half of my stomach. They had to mm -hmm. remove actually about 60% and my esophagus, too. And it's... Uh, it's tough on your body. Your body's right. not designed to be hacked to, hacked to bits right. like that, too. That's you know? right. I mean, still well, and I say, you know, if you want to do it, then do it. But if it's whatever you, you yep. know, whatever you're comfortable with. Yep. And I'm comfortable with me, so. That's the most important thing. There's, and you know what? There's a lot of people who are, who are uh, have, have the opposite problem. They they're, can be skinny and still not like themselves. Right. You know, right. it's all about who you are. I'm now, going a little crazy here. Now, this, we're going to, we've, we've put a little pam on the pan. Yep. We're going to put the potatoes on the pan. We're going to spray more pam on top of it. And basically, that's the only fat this has. Okay. And this is the olive oil fat. Yeah. Because so. is that better for us? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So we chose the olive oil. And, and when I did this, and I did it twice before my secretary and I decided that we liked it. And then we decided we really liked <laughs> it. So that's why we decided to do this program. Now, we're doing the tenderloin, and I dredged it in flour with the honey buzz. And we're going to put it in this baking dish, and we're going to bake it for about 35, 40 minutes. And during that time, we're going to have Miss Annie come on, and she's going to make us some biscuits. Because my biscuits are good, hers are better. And I need to learn. <laughs> I hate to say I said that, but her biscuits are awesome. So Now, this tenderloin smells wonderful. It does smell good. And, and this is one of those things. Tenderloin is the other white meat. It's not expensive when you find it like we found it today, $1.98 a pound. I mean, this is awesome. That's this great. is awesome. Well, guys, while we continue frying and uh, Hans is going to continue cutting sweet potatoes for me, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to have Miss Annie and we're going to be making biscuits. Ooh, I can't wait me for you too. to see her biscuits. Hang around, guys. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Heart of the Home. We are away from my home, but we're in Charlene's home. And Annie, yes. does this kind of seem like home? How many weeks have we been here? Three? Three. Three? <laughs> and it has, it has kind of, we're getting a little comfortable with it. I think Charlene's nervous because I can find everything now. I found you at Annie's. <laughs> I found Hans at work at ETC. Yep. And we decided you're going to teach us to make biscuits Annie's way. Yes. Now, I make good biscuits, but I don't think mine are as good as yours. With you have a trick. Can, yes. And you can make the same amount without wasting flour uh -huh. and stuff and make the amount you need. Now, did you see the Food Network when Hans did his segment? He was not a good oh, biscuit maker. I had maker. biscuit dough on all my fingers. <laughs> it, was was a, it, it was bad. It was bad. It was a tragedy. It was a tragedy. <laughs> it was a tragedy. So we want you to teach Hans and I how to make Annie's Famous Biscuits. Can you okay. do that? Yes. You start with the flour. And Annie, do we measure? Because I don't. No. You don't measure. You just pour it in. Okay. About Is that about half a bag? Uh-huh. About okay. half a bag. Okay. For about how many you think you're going to be And we're using it. white lily flour. And you take Crisco. And that looks like one big scoop and maybe a half of a big scoop? Uh-huh. Hans, give me the equivalent. Yeah, I, I don't measure anything either, sure. You know, I don't know what a cup we looks don't like. Measure, and I can't even spell cup. No. Okay, no. and I need my white lily bag. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay, and you want to flour the bottom. Okay. And you take and you mix it up. Okay. In the bowl. And Annie, what's the best tool in cooking? Your hands. Your hands. Yes. 
Your and you can make all those biscuits in the restaurant over there, good grief. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Yep. And Saturday mornings, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. How many here. biscuits mm -hmm. on Saturday morning do you make? Maybe 500? Uh, yes. Well. Pretty close. So Hans, if she can teach us to do this, does that mean that she could call us on Saturday morning at 3.30? Yeah. And we'd have to go help her? Yes. <laughs> oh no, Annie, that wasn't in this deal. You start at 3.30? Okay. Yes. Wow. She does. Me and Bonnie, we get there between 3.30 and 4 and start. You mix the Crisco okay. up in it until it sort of looks like cornmeal. Right. Let's show that because I don't do it that way, and I think that's a good, uh -huh. good it's hint. Already, yeah. The shortening's already mixed. Okay, good. And then I take. Now you use sweet milk sweet and milk butter and milk. milk. Okay. And just pour while you're mixing with your hands. Okay. Okay. That's okay. what my hands look like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how mine looked. And see, my grandmother's hands were always nice and clean. And she just thought I was a dunce because you, I could not do it the other way. And I do half and half. Okay, half, half buttermilk, butter half sweet milk. Half sweet milk. You don't want it too. And because we're here on a farm, is that farm fresh milk? Yes. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> farm fresh from the local grocery store. <laughs> I heard that cow mooing, but I, okay. think it was a, I don't think it was a milk cow. I think it was a moo cow. It was a bull. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a bull running from us. And you just mix it up. You don't want it. Real you don't thin, over mix it. And you don't want it too thick. Right. Now let's show the consistency of that. Okay. Now um, about, look like maybe a cup and a half of, of Crisco to uh -huh. half a bag of the flour. Put it on that. Now you cut your biscuits. No. No. Okay. I thought you did, because no. they're always about the same exact size, aren't they? Let me yes. hit that, and I'll okay. get rid of it for you. You done with the milks? Yes. I'll get those out of the way. Okay. We're good workers. <laughs> I don't know how good we're going to be learners, but we're good workers. <laughs> Better eaters. And you just take and knead it, and you don't want to, but just a little flour on the bottom. Uh-huh. And you don't want to work it too much. No. You just work it enough to get it a little okay. ball shape. Then I pinch mine off. You do pinch it. Okay. Do you like that? <gasps> Am I going to get to put my fingerprints on them? Yes. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. That's mm -hmm. like my granny taught me. Now, do they spread out quite a bit when you, when you uh -huh. cook them? So you got to uh -huh. leave some room in there? Yes. That just looks so simple. But now 500 of these, Hans, what you think? No, that would take me about a year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Our family would starve to death. Mm-hmm. Of course, now I can make peach cobbler for 400. And who taught you to make peach cobbler, Annie? Uh, Mama Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. I'm going to try one of these. And who taught you to make spaghetti, Annie? Mama Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I call her Mama Sherry. Now you're kind of kneading them in, it looks like. You're uh -huh. kind of pinching them yes, in. Just uh -huh. We'll move these up a little bit. Yeah, you, you better go. mark mine because mine's going to be as hard as a rock. <laughs> <laughs> See, Hans, that's funny, but my first one was mm -hmm. hard. It was honestly like a golf ball. You overworked it? It was like a golf ball. And then the next one was like a basketball. And neither one of them were fit to eat. <laughs> we need another pan. Okay, now what are we going to do with these? Okay. How, how are we going to flatten these? You just throw your hand okay. in the flour. That's how Granny did oh, it. Oh, well. wow. Okay, that's how Granny did it. How cool is that? And just and flatten I them love, down. I love the idea that I had food that had my grandmother's fingerprints yeah, in it. Neat. And this don't take no time to do. Mm-hmm. Well, you made three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen in what two minutes or yes. less? Okay. Now I'm gonna stick these in the oven at 450, is that right? Yes. Okay, we're gonna do it at 450. And let me tell you something we have with it. I'm gonna get you another <laughs> pan. We have <laughs> We have homemade pear mm -hmm. preserves. Now, what do you think about homemade pear preserves? Oh, they're good. When they come out, when these biscuits come out, we probably won't wait for the tenderloin. We we'll probably this. eat a pint Practice. of biscuits. I mean, a pint of preserves with these biscuits. <laughs> Woo. Pint of biscuits, too. Pint of biscuits, too. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Did Hans do that? Yes. I'm so proud mm -hmm. of you. We may have to You know, I think the Food Network ought to reconsider. That's right. <laughs> We'll try it again. Of course, we weren't crazy about their opinion oh. either. So we, we all voted for you, and, and we said you will always be our Food Network well, star. Thank you. Okay. Now, how about that? Now, are you going to mash those down? Yes. Did you want to? No, because okay. my hands are not dirty. <laughs> <laughs> how cool is that? 
so 15, 18, 21. We have got enough biscuits for 24 people. Yes. That is so cool in just about three minutes. Uh -huh. And you don't have a bowl full of no. flour to See, waste. See, I've never done this. Mm -hmm. And I do always have a bowl full of flour. Now I re-sift mine and use it again. Uh -huh. But this is a better plan. Uh -huh. Now who, who taught you to do this? Uh, my mother taught me to do this. And is your mom as good a cook as you are? Better. Better. <laughs> I better. find that hard to believe. Well, y'all hang around because when we come back, you're going to find out just how good Annie's biscuits are. And you're going to find mm. out we have a family recipe for pear preserves. And one of my cousins made the best pear preserves. And we're going to try those with Annie's biscuits. So hang around, guys. We'll be right back. The biscuits are out of the oven. Hans, you did a great job. I think my four are over here somewhere. Oh, they're wonderful. <laughs> and Annie made gravy for us. Now, Annie, the simplest gravy in the world. We have assembled, this looks like a trough. People are going to the trough <laughs> to eat. I can't believe this. We're going to have biscuits and gravy. And we're going to serve this now because the tenderloin and sweet potatoes aren't done yet. And these people were starving to death. So let's give them some Annie's biscuits and okay. gravy. Okay, now Angie, do you want pear preserves? Yes, please. These are homemade pear preserves, and everybody knows my family, the best cooks in the world, pear preserves. There you go. Pear preserves? Thank no, thank you. Scott? Yes, yes, okay. Now remember, Annie's Biscuits can be found every Saturday morning, actually Monday through Saturday, at Annie's Restaurant, 1995 mm -hmm. Talking Rock Road. And if you show up and Hans and I are there cooking, don't be surprised. <laughs> right. Don't be surprised. At 3.30 in the morning. Hon, she may try to take a vacation and give us a job. Well, I think I know how to do it now. I don't think it'll let me quite as good. I think we can good, do this. Man, this smells go. wonderful. I start my Saturdays with Annie's biscuits and gravy and tenderloin. And I just, they're so easy. This was so cool. Thanks for sharing this it's with us. It's kind of the who's who of Pickens County. You never know who you're going to see when you go in there, too. I That's exactly see right. The commissioner. You want some preserves? Yes. Okay. Now, this is a recipe that will be on our website. The pear preserve recipe will be there. And we're not going to give you <laughs> any secret gravy recipe. It's really no secret. And I'll just show up out there and order it. It's wonderful. This is so cool. This has been such a great day. We're going to keep waiting on The tenderloin's not quite ready and the sweet potatoes aren't quite ready. But we just decided, let's feed them biscuits. What do you think about this? I don't want any? OK. You want gravy? If you don't want gravy, you just want preserves. Coming around, so right? There you go. Wow, these are awesome. Boy, that pint of preserves went fast, didn't it? Save me a little bit. There here. you go. I'm gonna save you some. Now, Hans, Southern cooking is the best. Your dad's restaurant has a German flair, obviously. That's right. But um, he does some southern things. Your grandmother's pound cake recipe is done there. That's right. I really grew up. Um, I think we talked about this before too. I grew up. Uh, kind of looking forward to funerals because uh -huh. the, I, had the, I had the best know that southern feeling. food every That's time. Right. You know, I oftentimes didn't know the person in the box, and that sounds kind of cool. Uh, but the go. food was fantastic. That's I mean, right. You know, That's so. right. It doesn't get any better than a good southern family reunion. We got everybody. I think we got everybody. Yep, this is, this oh, is awesome. Us, so. Oh yeah. There you go. And I did save Hans some preserves. Okay. You want a little bit of preserves? Nope. Michelle, you I'm want some good. preserves? You good? Well, here, okay, now Hans, honey, this is for you. All right, good. Now, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to make the quickest chicken salad in the world. I promised my staff I would have this ready for them for lunch tomorrow. So we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, you will do, we're going to do chunky chicken salad. You're going to chop the celery. Some people don't like celery. Some people do. I use it in mine because it gives it a bite. Nice crunch. But right now, Hans, Thank enjoy you, Annie's business. Thank you, Annie. <laughs> now, hang around, guys. We'll be right back. Welcome back. What a great day. Courtney, Elizabeth, y'all have gotten to know each other a little bit. And now we're going to teach you, Hans is going to teach me how to chop celery really, really quick. Because oh you are the king of the knife. Yeah, and I, I didn't bring my, my usual knife, so I'm a little bit, this is the, the time I'm going to actually cut myself. So. No, 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 don't <laughs> say that, don't say that. We're going to make chicken salad. Now, girls, we started with chicken breast that we baked, and we used a little bit of honey buzz on it, Hans, Hans product. And all we did was debone it. And this is called chunky chicken salad for a reason. This is going to be so easy. You can impress a guy with this. Now, keep in mind, everything <laughs> in my life is about impressing a man, right? <laughs> yeah, right. OK. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> now, we put some cranberries or craisins in there because that's my favorite ingredient. Would you have thought about doing that? No. Well, there nice, you go. Nice kind of sweet bite to it there. It yeah. is wonderful. And some people don't like celery, and we talked about that. 
I like the bite that celery yeah, puts too. in there. So we're going to add some celery. Is this enough for what you got there? Or I you think so, yeah. Since we have some non-celery eaters in the, in the group here. We do. And if you don't like celery, just, you know, pick, pick it, it out. out. Pick right. it out. Pick it out. <clears throat> we're going to add mayonnaise. And you notice how we're measuring Hans. Now, that was precise. <laughs> exactly. That was one, absolutely one positively. One glob of mayonnaise. That's right. And can you do me some pecans now? Oh, yeah. What I'll do is just keep them in the bag and just rough crunch them that way. Oh, neat. If I, uh, if I take them out and cut them, they shoot everywhere. They I'm do. Gonna, gonna they do. Up, so. And with this many people standing around, do you know, have you noticed these folks are fuller than a tick? <laughs> 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 we have been cooking and cooking and cooking. Now, I'm going to let you decide how much honey buns okay. to add to this. Let me uh, take off the shaker top. Tell me what you think. It's a, just a nice, you know, it's got that kind of sweet smokiness to it, so I don't okay. want to go too much, but just enough to kind of give it a little, and that color is going to be really pretty in there, oh, too. Oh, man, and it is something I wouldn't have thought about three weeks ago, but thank goodness we worked together in the mornings, and you came in with this product, and I said, hey, let's go for it. Yeah, it's funny how we, we're like two ships passing in the night sort of thing that, uh, you know, we, we work in the same building, yet we rarely right. see each other. Right, right. I'm usually off doing something. And I'm there early in the morning doing the live show, That's and really you good. were there today for the live show. That's right. And um, it's funny because we do live two hours. That does not unnerve me in the least, but the getting out in the public does really? unnerve me, and that doesn't bother you in the least. No, not at all. And, uh, you know, Isn't that funny? But I was such a, oh, you remember, I was a shy child, yes. you know, and uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, <laughs> I don't know now some sweet worse. pickle relish. Now, girls, tell me the ingredients. Cran raisins and mayonnaise, hmm. celery. Celery. And chicken, pecans. Those are pecans. Pecans. <laughs> pecans. You can't live in Jordan and not know what pecans are. No, no, are. gotta have pecans. Well, this is the best part of the show where I can't open the jar. Here we go. That's okay, <laughs> that's okay. And this is not live, but <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Now put, uh, yeah, a little Another bit one? more, a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I love this stuff. Cool, I love this. And I don't like, have you gone to those restaurants that have that kind of mushed up chicken oh, salad? Yeah, oh, yeah, to be chunky. No, don't like that. And this would be good the next day is a, is a chicken it's melt. It's better. You know, chicken it salad is better. melt. Yeah. That's right. Well, we're going to have this tomorrow for lunch at my office. So if you're in Jasper tomorrow, <laughs> by. stop by. Yeah, and have lunch with us. Hans, thank you so much for being here. Elizabeth, welcome from Russia. Courtney, thanks for making friends with her quickly. We appreciate that. It's been a great day, guys. The pork tenderloin is ready. The sweet potatoes, Hans. Yeah, they came out good. The I've honey buzz, it's perfect. Thank it you. is absolutely perfect. Thank you so much. Great idea, great recipes. They'll all be available on our website, so check us out, heartofthehomerecipes.com. We'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye. Headed down south to the land of the pines Crumbing my way into North Carolina Staring up the road, pray to God to see the headlines I made it down the coast in 17 hours Pick me a bucket of flowers Hoping for all the I can see my baby tonight So rock me mama like a wagon wheel Rock me mommy Guitar, I play the banjo now. Open up, touch your windows, keep forgetting me now. I lost some money playing poker, had to up and leave, but I ain't turning back to live that old life no more. So rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, any way you feel.
to the south and run oh got a truck around a Philly hat and also told he's headed west to the Cumberland Gap from Johnson City to Tennessee and I gotta get a moving move for my son I hear my baby calling my name and I know she's the only one if I die probably at least I will die free Hey, mama, rock me. Hey, mama, rock me.